this evening we're very thankful for this time to stop our work just for a minute, stop our activity, take a break, and reflect on some good work. Tonight um, we're trying to celebrate some good work going on during a season of life, um, that going to college season, which Dr. Goodson talked about today in his lecture, which might be three years, four years, five years. <laughs> Six years, uh, and maybe for some of us that going to college season is like some years and a life detours and come back and for some years. And so we're celebrating also some good work that has spanned people's lifetimes here tonight. So we have three honorary, honorary categories that will be um, taking some time to lift people up. One is Pi Gamma Mu, our Social Sciences Honors, and the Leaders in Service Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, excuse me. So we're gonna begin with our induction and honor cords for Pi Gamma Mu. We at Southwestern College hold the distinction that this honor society was started as a joint effort between Southwestern College and the College of William and Mary in 1924. The mission of Pi Gamma Mu is in part to nurture scholarship, leadership, and service. So from those of us who have been your nurturers here at Southwestern, we are pleased to be able to honor students who are studying and preparing to be persons who make meaningful contributions in our world. We have invited students to join Pi Gamma Mu who have met the criteria of 20 social sciences credit, maintaining a 3.0 average. And tonight we are very happy to acknowledge those who have received our invitation. This year, we're particularly happy for the first time to include our professional studies students. And our first PS student is actually here with us tonight. So we're very excited about that. Troy Fort is our current president of Pi Gamma Mu and he will assist me as we invite our new inductees to come forward. So if Erica Paul and Chris Evans will come forward, please. Erica Paul is from on our main campus studying philosophy and religion. And this is Christopher Evans, professional studies student studying psychology. Welcome to Pi Gamma Mu. Thank you. <laughs> Ten of our Pi Gamma Mu students with this, e with us this evening are also graduating this spring and are heading out to take their next places in the world. So students, as I call your names, um, please come forward and your professors will um, give you your honor cord for graduation. Melissa Connell. Melissa is graduating with a BA in philosophy and religion and a minor in English. After graduation, she plans to work at Andover United Methodist Church in Andover, Kansas as the director of youth ministries. Her cord is presented by Dr. Goodson. Erica Paul. Erica is graduating with a BA in philosophy and religion. After graduation, she will be attending the University of Oklahoma College of Law. Erica currently works at Dietz Library as the lead library technician and volunteers with various nonprofit organizations that partner with the discipleship <coughs> program. Her court is being presented by Dr. Goodson. <coughs> Troy Ford. Troy is graduating with a BA in psychology with minors in biology and criminal justice. After graduation, Troy will join the behavioral neuroscience PhD program at Kansas State University. His court is presented by Dr. Lane. Abigail Groff. Abby is graduating with a BA in history with minors in political science and business administration. After graduation, she plans on attending Emory Law School in Atlanta, Georgia. Her cord is presented by Dr. Woodburn. Ashley Smith. Ashley is graduating with a BA in psychology. After graduation, she plans to attend graduate school in positive psychology. Her cord is presented by Dr. Lane. Trey Winters. Trey is graduating with a BA in psychology. After graduating, he will start his career with the Kansas Highway Patrol. His court is presented by Dr. Negley. Derlicia Thompson is graduating with a BA in psychology and a minor in business. 
After graduation, she plans on attending Oklahoma State University to get her education specialist degree in school psychology. Her court is presented by Dr. Negri. <coughs> Anna Mankowski. Anna is graduating with a BA in psychology with minors in business administration and criminal justice. After graduation, she plans to work in Wichita while pursuing her master's in human resources online at Colorado State University Global Campus. Her court is presented by Dr. Negri. Shayla Jordan. Shayla is graduating with a Bachelor's of Art in Philosophy and Religion with a minor in Leadership Studies. In the fall, she will be attending SMU for a dual master's degree in Divinity and Higher Educational Leadership and is pursuing ordination in the United Methodist Church as an elder. Her court is presented by Associate Professor Dr. Lazier. And Timothy Rosperoy. Timothy is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Science in arts and liberal sciences, which is composed of three minors, leadership, psychology, and political science. Tim plans to continue to work in the nonprofit sector following graduation. And I get to present. Our second category of honorees this, even, this evening is for the Social Sciences Honors Program. The Social Sciences <coughs> Division launched an honors program in the fall of 2014. The program has enrichment opportunities outside the classroom, requires six honors courses, and an honors capstone project or thesis. We have two students who have successfully satisfied the requirements to graduate <coughs> with honors in the Social Sciences. <coughs> to some listening, this may seem like a heroic student moment. Who does this? Like six extra <laughs> classes and an honors thesis? As with most heroic moments, we want to acknowledge that behind this one paper title that I'm going to read right now are hundreds of invisible to us hours of reading and writing that you have invested and that have brought you to this place. And possibly both of you might have a couple more hours to do. <laughs> the um, so, will the two of you, Melissa and Bryant, will you gather here with your thesis advisor as I read your name and your capstone thesis summary? Bryant Belden. His capstone thesis is a missional reading of Contra Celsum for North American Christians. Bryant's project is a close reading of an ancient Christian text from a missionary perspective. He shows how the early Christian scholar, Origen, employs a missionary method from within a non-Christian environment. Parallels drawn between Origen's setting and the emerging post-Christian West invites the relevance of the study for the mission and identity of North American Christians today. Bryant was advised by Michael Beardsley, the Institute for Discipleship Visiting Scholar. Melissa Connell, her capstone thesis, Reimagining Charity, Philosophers and Theologians as Consultants for Modern Charitable Organizations. Melissa studied the meaning of Christian charity according to Apostle Paul, Thomas Aquinas, and Soren Kierkegaard. She also read several recent critiques of the way that charitable organiza organizations work. Her thesis compares and contrasts these recent critiques of charitable organizations with the ways that Paul, Aquinas, and Kierkegaard conceptualize charity. She treats Paul, Aquinas, and Kierkegaard as if they came to us today as consultants to help charitable organizations think through what it means to serve the needy, oppressed, and poor in the 21st century. Melissa was advised by Dr. Jacob Gertz. So as we look forward to seeing how these young adults engage in the world beyond SC, we urge them con to continue the work captured in writer and theologian Frederick Buechner's famous line, the place that God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet.
tonight, the highlight of our honorary recognitions are for three persons who found that deep intersection of personal joy and the need of the other. We are so thankful for their lives of service that help all of us get a glimpse of what that important meeting of joy and need looks like. The Southwestern College Leaders in Service Hall of Fame for the Social Sciences was established in 2009 to honor alumni and friends who have taken their education and enriched our world by offering their time and talent as leaders in service to others. It is right and fitting that we recognize these worthy individuals for their efforts, and the college is so privileged to be a part of this honor. I would like to call your attention to the table here, to these beautiful glass creations on the table beside me. These are one-of-a-kind awards that we'll be giving annually to our Leaders in Service Hall of Fame inductees. They're handcrafted by Mr. Scott Hartley, class of 97, a Southwestern science major who went on to use his artistic talents and his knowledge of science to become a master glass blower. We are fortunate to be able to give these unique gifts to our inductees to permanently remind them of our place, in our, of their place in our Hall of Fame. Our first inductee is Mary Briscoe Jarvis. Mary was a non-traditional student whose degree in social work helped her build a career of service to persons unable to advocate for themselves. Mary combined the roles of mother, homemaker, professional, and volunteer worker all her adult life. Highlights of her professional clear career included serving as a community support coordinator for Cowley County Mental Health and Counseling Center, director of Grace House, and executive director of CASA of Cali County. Winfield, Cali County, and the region have benefited from her tireless volunteer work for such groups as the Winfield Community Theater, Art in the Park, Friends of the Library, Winfield Arts and Humanities, the Community Learning Center, and Habitat for Humanity. With her husband, Phil, she was awarded Southwestern College's Servant Leader Award in 2011. Mary, I invite you to come forward. I'm glad to see uh, Pi Gamma Mu. I'm a Pi Gamma Mu, so good, good to see so many students doing that. And also, the young lady who did the thing on charity and not for profits, I need that paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for this honor. I feel extremely humbled and somewhat perplexed to be in the impressive company of the honorees chosen today and in the years since 2009. I would like to introduce my fans over here at the table three. Uh, my husband, Phil Jarvis, who has uh, supported me and, and made sure I got through Southwestern College when I did, thank you. And my granddaughter, Sierra Jarvis, who is uh, representing the family, thank you, Sierra. And good friends, Bob and Mary Hartley, that we've adopted and they've adopted us. So happy to have you here. To be truthful, in the week since Charles McKenzie informed me of my selection, I've been tempted to respond like the old comedian and actor Groucho Marx when he said, I sent a wire stating, please accept my resignation. I don't want to belong to any club that will have me for a member. <laughs> for the students here, you can Google G-R-O-U-C-H-O-M-A-R-X and W-I-R-E. Not to be confused with C-A-R-L marks. Someday I hope to meet the obvious stranger who nominated me. Tomorrow is my 72nd birthday. What? I remember when my firstborn was four years old, he stared at my 70-something father and said, Grandpa? How did your face get so wrinkled? Not missing a beat, my dad said, it took a lot of work. <laughs> That's how I feel. Every joy, every pain, every laugh, every tear, every injury, every at a girl, every experience is etched into myself, if not on my face, within my heart. In 1990, when my mother was 83 years old, she took a class in writing memories. Um, 
I found her papers when I, when I cleaning out her house after she died at the age of 98. This is how she remembers me. Our daughter, Mary Helen Briscoe, was welcomed into our family circle with joy on April 14, 1946, joining her two older brothers, age nine and six. She was named Mary after her great-grandmother, Mary Alicia Brunstein Riddell, and Helen after her mother, Helen Mary Lydikin Briscoe. Yes, completely German on that side. <laughs> My dad's side was English and French. Not as stoic, a bit more emotional. Mom wrote in my baby book, now we have a complete family. Dad said, the boys satisfied my ego, but you will always be my luxury. Ah, uh, <laughs> not so sure about that. <laughs> when I was three, the family moved from St. Uh, Louis County, Missouri to St. Charles, Missouri, just one block from my paternal grandparents. Grandma and Grandpa did not have a car, but my dad was a devoted son and provided frequent transportation. We were staunch Catholics, and in the summers, every little Catholic church in the outlying small communities had church picnic and the inevitable chicken dinner. <laughs> my two older brothers would have a ball game or some other excuse not to go, but I, being much younger, had to go with them. Grandma called me her special little traveler and I still like to travel. On Christmas Eve, we all anticipated walking the block down to Grandma and Grandpa's house. My dad's family would all be there. Aunts, uncles, cousins would pile into the kitchen awaiting Santa. Grandpa would be heard on the other side of the pocket door to the dining room. Jingle bells would ring. Grandpa would shout, thank you, Santa. And in we would all dash to seek our gifts. Happy times. Mom wrote, Mary was an average, thanks mom, little girl during her grade school years. She played in the band, took dance lessons, was in the Brownies and Girl Scouts, going camping and hiking. The Scouts would visit nursing homes, bringing a little joy to the elderly. When she was five years old, the neighbor was a senior in high school, chosen to be the basketball queen. Mary was asked to be her flower girl. She loved being all dressed up and on the stage. From then on, she had a flair for the stage. In high school, Mary took part in many activities. She seemed to have many friends and was a leader. She was chosen to go to Missouri Girls State after her junior year. Also that year, she was one of the girls chosen to be a princess at the winter ball. From age 13 to 18, Mary worked every summer at a girls camp, working her way from store clerk, clerk to program director. After high school, she attended Mount St. Scholastica College in Atchison, Kansas for two years now Benedictine College. My mother continues, I found a difference in raising boys and girls. If I would say to the boys, don't do this or don't do that, they would say, yes, mother. But when they got out of sight, they did what they wanted to do. Mary and I would clash occasionally. At times, we didn't see eye to eye. She would state her opinion and wanted to know the reason why I couldn't agree. Why talk about my childhood? Well, it sounds a little idyllic, doesn't it? I was born in the first year of the post-World War II baby boomer generation. America was optimistic again after a decade and a half of economic depression and war. The boomers grew up fully expecting the world to improve with time. It was also a time of changing values and we grew up not remembering the war and cre creating the good old times when life was wonderful. 76.4 million of us were born between 1946 and 1964. More births than ever before. While my small time family was making memories, the nation and the world was moving on to new challenges. There was the Cold War and the Red Scare, rock and roll, the Cuban Missile Crisis, assassinations of President Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert Kennedy, political unrest and the moon landing, the increasing buildup of the Vietnam War and the anti-war protest, sexual freedom and social and drug experimentation, the civil rights and women's movements, Woodstock, more protests and riots and the war on poverty. Later boomers grew up with even more increasing societal change. Given this history, is it any wonder that this small town girl's awareness of others 
and desire of service was born. As good Catholic students, we prayed for the conversion of Russia. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Saved pennies to, to save uh, African orphan babies. Learned we were born in sin and carried an unhealthy guilt because of it. Not all of us reacted the same way, but some of us were more sensitive to outcasts, the bullied and the abused. Heck, I even wanted to bring home a pink little piglet that my dad stopped the car for me to look at. And I spent some time crying myself to sleep each night because I wanted a little sister or brother to love. I was an idealist and was born into an idealistic time for youth. Now as an old movie flipped the calendar forward to 1985 when I was 39 and living in Winfield, Kansas, and the mother of two sons and two stepsons, my first marriage had ended and I was now happily married to a wonderful man, but not happy with my job. I felt no passion or commitment enter Southwestern College. Dr. James Jane Rogers was on the faculty here and I knew her through the Winfield Community Theater. Having experienced bouts of depression and feelings of failure through the previous decade, I thought I did not have the intelligence to finish college. Jane insisted I did indeed have what it would take and she was relentless in telling me, you are smart, you need to finish college. She finally got me uh, through to me and I went to check it out. I decided that two things I could be passionate about were the theater and helping others reach their potential. Well, I didn't think I could make it 